The tension in their arms supplies the centripetal force that makes each person travel in a circular orbit about this point. The gravitational force supplies the centripetal force that makes this large and small mass orbit their center of mass, which is indicated by the plus sign. The two masses might be the Earth and the Sun, or the Moon going around the Earth, and both of those going around the Sun, and the Sun and its planets orbiting the galaxy. We already learned that your weight, little mg, is due to the gravitational attraction between your mass and the mass, big M sub e, of the entire Earth. The moon also puts a gravitational force on you. Here is the earth. This is the moon. Their centers are separated by this earth-moon distance. Here is the radius of the earth. When you are here and the moon is directly overhead, the net force on you is reduced by the gravitational attraction of the moon, whose geometric center is a distance r sub e m minus r sub e away from the person. The net force produces your apparent weight, little mg, minus the gravitational attraction between you and the moon. The weight of a 100 kilogram person is decreased by 0 .0003 newtons. When the moon is directly below your feet, the net force on you is increased by the gravitational attraction of the moon, whose geometric center is a distance r sub e m plus the radius of the earth away from you. The net force produces your apparent weight m g plus g m m over r e m plus r e squared. The weight of a 100 kilogram person is increased by 0 0.0003 newtons. If you move toward the moon, you would reach a point at which the gravitational force of the Earth is balanced by the gravitational force of the Moon on you. The two gravitational forces are balanced when the mass is a distance x away from the Earth and a distance r minus x away from the Moon. The two gravitational forces are equal at the point x where g little m times the mass of the earth over x squared equals g little m times the mass of the moon over r minus x squared. Cancel the common factor g little m and cross multiply to get r minus x squared equals the ratio of the mass of the moon to the mass of the earth times x squared. And then square root both sides to have r minus x equals plus or minus the square root of the mass ratio times x, or r equals x times 1 plus or minus the square root of the mass ratio, or x equals r divided by 1 plus or minus the square root of the mass of the moon over the mass of the earth. Since the ratio of the masses is 0 0.0123, we get x equals 0.9r, which is a stable point, or x equals 1.1r, which is on the far side of the moon and is an unstable point because mass m will be attracted into the surface of the moon. The two gravitational forces are equal at both solutions for x, but at this solution the vector forces point in opposite directions and cancel, while at this point the two vector forces point in the same direction. A space hotel could set in balance at x equals 0.9r. If the hotel is displaced along this line, then the x component of the two forces still cancel, but the net y component will be downward along this vertical line at point Q. The hotel will move until it reaches point P, where it will reverse direction in a repeating cycle. Such masses are found between the sun and most every planet, and between planets and their moons and are said to be Trojan satellites. Here is Paul Weigert's animation of the Earth's Trojan satellite. This was just recently discovered. Rather than being stationary, the Moon orbits the Earth, 
The difference between the gravitational forces of the moon and the earth provide the centripetal force to make the mass move in a circular orbit. The earth is a sphere of material, all of which puts a gravitational force on this person. Deep within the earth, this piece of the earth's material puts an attractive force on the person that points in this direction. Here is an identical amount of mass placed symmetrically on the other side of the earth's center line. This piece of mass puts a gravitational force on the person that points in this direction. The vector sum of these two forces produce a net force that points straight toward the center of the earth. If you divide all of the material of the earth into such symmetrically placed pairs, we see that the net gravitational force of all of the material of the earth pulls this person straight toward the center of the earth. This collection of mass points will each feel a net gravitational force acting toward the center. This is the way that interstellar debris gravitates into new stars and planets. Here are several thousand mass points that have been thrown radially outward from the center. There is a slight range in the magnitude and direction of the velocity vectors for these mass points. The passage of time is counted in the upper left corner. Each mass point is gravitationally attracted toward every other mass point. The mass points quickly begin to bunch up, but each mass point fills a net gravitational force that is inward toward the center of the circle. As time passes, the masses are pulled toward the center. The animation consists of a series of time steps. At each time step, the net force on each mass is calculated and then each mass is moved slightly in the direction of its net force. How do we add these n force vectors? Here is mass m1 located at coordinates x1, y1, and here is mass m2 located at coordinates x2, y2. The vector force lies along the line joining the two masses. We form this triangle. This length is x2 minus x1. This length is y2 minus y1. So the distance between the two masses is given by this r. Cosine theta is this adjacent side divided by r. And sine theta is the opposite side divided by r. The difference is x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1 produce positive or negative values depending on the quadrant of each mass. The x component of the force, f cosine theta, is given by this, and the y component of the force, f sine theta, is given by this. These equations are used to calculate the direction of the net force on each mass point at each moment in time. Here are two masses, m1 and m2. At moment a, they are separated by distance r sub a. Near the surface of the Earth, we use u equals mgh. But on an astronomical scale, the gravitational potential energy is u sub g equals minus g m1 m2 over r. With this choice of potential energy function, we automatically have u sub g equals zero when the distance r equals infinity. The total mechanical energy of mass m1 in motion at distance r from mass m2 is then kinetic plus potential equals one half m1 v squared minus g m1 m2 over r. At two different points in the motion, a and b, the conservation of energy is still written e sub a equals e sub b equals constant. Suppose that mass m1 is held stationary while mass m2 moves around in the gravitational field of m1. The conservation of energy for mass 2 at the two points a and b 
is one half m2 va squared minus g m1 m2 over r a equals one half m2 vb squared minus g m1 m2 over r b. An astronaut moves from point A to point B as she is gravitationally attracted toward the space shuttle. Given the velocity of point A, please find the velocity of point B. We see that the velocity hardly changed. In the chapter on the electric force, we'll instead throw an electrically charged life ring to the astronaut. Here is the Earth and its mass, and the Moon and its mass. Big R is the distance between the centers of the Earth and the Moon. A spaceship of mass M3 has velocity V while coasting with its engine off between the Earth and the Moon. Mass M3 has gravitational potential energy relative to each of the other two masses. The total mechanical energy of the moving mass M3 is given by this. When M3 moves to location R prime, then it has a new energy E prime that is equal to the original energy E. R13 is the distance between mass 1 and 3. We take R13 equal to 1 half big R. R13 prime equals big R over 4 is the distance between masses 1 and 3 at the second moment in time. R23 is the distance between mass 2 and 3. R23 prime is the distance between those two at the second moment in time. If V equals 300 meters per second, show that V prime equals 2060 meters per second. Can you throw a rock from the surface of the Earth such that it reaches all the way to infinity? Here is the object of mass little m on the surface of a planet or other object of mass big M and radius r. You throw the object with this velocity from the surface of the Earth. The conservation of energy between the moments of throw and reaching infinity is this equation. At the moment of being thrown, the initial kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. The initial potential energy at the surface of the Earth is big G, little m, big M over R. When the thrown mass, little m, reaches infinity, its velocity and its kinetic energy are zero. And at R equal infinity, the potential energy is zero. So these two terms are zero. This means that the total mechanical energy is zero when the object reaches infinity. Cancel little m and solve for the escape velocity equals the square root of 2 g big M over r equals the square root of 2 little g r because little g equals big G m over r squared. By symmetry, an object dropped from infinity will have this speed when it reaches the surface of the planet. Here are some escape velocities for the Earth, Mars, Moon, and the Sun. When objects strike the surface of the Earth, their velocity tells us about their origin. Compare the escape velocity for a planet having four times the mass and twice the radius of the Earth. The ratio of escape speeds for the planet and the Earth is given by this. Canceling the common factor 2 big G, we get the square root of mp over me times Re over Rp, which is the square root of 4 times 1 half, which makes the square root of 2. The circumference of the Earth is 24,000 miles, and it takes 24 hours for the Earth to spin once on its own axis. This means that the Earth's equator moves at a speed of 1,000 miles per hour, but the rotational speed of the pole is zero. To take advantage of the Earth's rotational speed, we launch spaceships from as close to the equator as possible. Here is a collection of three mass points. Their mutual energy is due to the work done against the gravitational force when moving each mass, one by one, to its location. 
begin with the first mass located at the origin. To place the second mass a distance R12 from the first mass, the work U12 equals minus G M1 M2 over R12 must be done. When a third mass is brought in, it is a distance R13 from the first mass and a distance R23 from the second mass. The work needed to bring in the third mass is U13 plus U23 equals minus G M1 M3 over R13 minus G M2 M3 over R23. The mutual energy of the collection of three masses is this grand total. For these values, please show that the total is minus 8 G M1 squared over R12. The gravitational force supplies the centripetal force, causing a planet of mass little m to move in a circular orbit of radius r around its star of mass big M. We have g little m times big M over r squared equals mv squared over r. We write the centripetal force equation in terms of the period t as 4 pi squared little m r over the period squared. The velocity of the orbiting mass is the distance over time. When the distance is once around the circle, then the time is a period. We have 2 pi r over t. Cancel m and solve for the period squared equals 4 pi squared over g times the mass of the orbited object times r cubed. This is Kepler's law, which states that the period squared goes as the radius cubed. This equation can be used to determine the mass of an orbited object. For example, knowing that the period of the Earth's motion around the Sun is one year, which is about pi times 10 to the 7 seconds, and that the radius of the Earth's orbit is 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters. Please show that the mass of the Sun is 2 times 10 to the 30th kilogram. The period of Uranus is 84 times that of the Earth. What is the ratio of the orbital distances for Uranus and the Earth? The ratio of periods is T sub U over T sub E squared, which is 84 squared. In the numerator, we put 4 pi squared RU cubed over big GM. In the denominator, we put 4 pi squared RE cubed over GM. We cancel the 4 pi squareds and the big GMs. We have RU over RE cubed. Please show that the radius of the orbit of Uranus is 84 to the 2 thirds power R sub E, which is 19 R sub E. The satellite dish at your home points into the sky straight at a satellite that hovers directly above. That satellite hovers motionless directly above your home because the orbital period of its motion matches the 24-hour rotational period of the Earth. This is said to be a geosynchronous satellite. Using Kepler's law, we can find the orbital distance r such that the period of a satellite is 24 hours, which is 86,400 seconds. With this period, please show that you get r equals 4.2 times 10 to the 7th meters which is 26,000 miles. Your satellite dish is pointing at a satellite that is 26,000 miles away. If your home is on the equator, then your satellite dish makes an angle theta equals 90 degrees from the ground. If your home is at latitude alpha, then your satellite dish points at an angle theta equals 90 minus alpha. Pluto's moon, Charon, is in such a geosynchronous orbit and hovers above a single point of the surface of Pluto. By the way, as Pluto gets farther from the Sun, in its annual motion about the Sun, its entire nitrogen atmosphere freezes and falls to the ground on one particular day. You might like to travel to Pluto to see this occur.
Kepler has three laws of planetary motion. The first law, planets orbit the Sun in elliptical orbits with the Sun at one focus. The second law, a satellite sweeps out equal areas in equal times as it revolves around its parent. The third law we've already met, that the period squared goes as the radius cube. So the inner planets have shorter periods than do the outer planets. The second law is a consequence of the conservation of angular momentum. A satellite sweeps out equal areas in equal times as it revolves around its parent, traveling faster when near the parent and more slowly when far from the parent. This difference in speed makes the two arcs, delta S1 equals V1 delta T, and delta S2 equals V2 delta T, have different lengths even though both occurred through identical intervals of time. Each arc forms a differential triangle of area delta A equals one half R delta S equals one half R V delta T. Multiply by mass M to get M delta A equals one half MVR delta T, but L equals MVR equals constant, so we get Kepler's second law. Delta A delta T equals L over 2M equals constant. Humanity's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, is one half mile in height, which is 830 meters or yards. The Jeddah Tower in Saudi Arabia will be over one kilometer in height. When standing at the top of a one kilometer tall building, your weight is 99.99% of your weight at ground level. When standing on the top of a 100 mile tall building, your weight is 95% of its value when standing on the ground. When space shuttle astronauts are in orbit 100 miles above the ground, their weight is 95% of its value at the ground. Why do we say astronauts are weightless? Because they are falling. They are falling toward the center of the Earth, but at the same time, their horizontal velocity keeps them in orbit around the Earth. How far do they fall in one second? Y equals one half GT squared equals 4.9 meters. Paul Hewitt explains that the surface of the Earth falls away from a tangential by 4.9 meters every 8,000 meters. A spaceship traveling parallel to the surface of the Earth at 8,000 meters per second will fall by 4.9 meters each second and will continually fall around the Earth. Astronauts can feel in their stomach that they are falling 24 hours a day. If you stand on a scale in a tree, the scale will read your weight. If you and the scale fall out of that tree, the scale will read zero while you are falling. While falling, if you reach out your hand and let go of a piece of candy, both you and the candy will fall together. The candy will appear to be hovering in mid-air while you are both falling downward. The astronauts and these objects are all falling vertically downward 4.9 meters with each passing second. While in free fall, a pendulum does not oscillate, Tears do not fall, but grow into spheres that stay attached to the eyes, and fire flames form spheres that do not rise. Newton figured out that the same force dropping an apple also drops the moon, which falls around the earth with a tangential velocity of a thousand meters per second, while falling directly toward the earth by 14 millimeters with each second. Nobody in the year 1687 thought that a mere human being could find an equation that even the heavens obeyed. Many solar systems contain two or even three stars. Einstein explains that mass curves the fabric of space-time and curved space tells mass how to move. Using the energy of one star per second, 
We might be able to warp space enough to touch two regions of the galaxy into a wormhole that allows people to pass. Equations show that if you traveled through the wormhole, you would meet every other person who traveled through before or after you, even if the wormhole lasted for one century.